Okay, this is Jack Jackson. We're going to continue in our little series of videos talking about continuous probability and calculator technology. And this one we're going to look, look how to use a TI Inspire or a TI 83 or 84 calculator to approximately gra graph uh, a CDF cumulative density function if we know the formula for the PDF function. Now, first of all, Notice, or the question is, when do we even need to get you get a CDF? If you're just trying to find probabilities, you don't need to do that. You can get probabilities from either the PDF or the CDF. But for inverse probability problems, we really need the CDF. So we need the CDF to do inverse probability problems. So if you're given the CDF, inverse probability or probability, no sweat. Easy to do. If we have the PDF, we can find probabilities, no problem. But we can't really do inverse probabilities just with the PDF. That's problematic. Can we still solve inverse probability problems if we only are given the formula for the PDF? And the answer is yes, we can if uh, we, can, we can use the calculator to do it. And so this will, these slides will show you how to do that. So what you do is you enter your PDF formula in Y1. And, of course, that will change with each new PDF formula. Now, the next part, you really would only have to do one time. And if you want to, you can put this in once you've got it in following this video. You could just leave this in for Y2. This is a TI-84 uh, version here. Okay. And we can just put in the integral from, from L up to X of Y1 of X dx. And this will give you the the uh, this will give you the area or probability from some lower amount to x. Now, what does L have to be? There are a couple of things you have to do to make this work. Number one, we actually need a formula in Y1 for the PDF. That's going to be given to us. Then we need to choose an appropriate L and store something in L before we run this. What does L need to be? Well, L needs to be something so that the formula <coughs> does apply from to the right of L and the probability to the left of L is zero or is at least extremely close to zero. So in some cases, L should be negative infinity, but we can't really put that in. So we need to put something in instead of negative infinity so that the probability to the left of that L value is so close to zero, it doesn't really help, doesn't really hurt us. Now, warning. Graphing this, what this is doing is doing thousands of calculations to get the graph. Okay, and so it may turn out to graph very slowly. I mean, quite slowly, maybe maybe a few minutes. Okay, to get this to graph out. But once you can do this, then you can graph the inverse. You can graph the y value that you need here, and do a calc intersect to find an inverse probability. Really, that's the only thing you would need this for is for inverse probabilities. Now, sidebar, if you know calculus, in some cases, calculus techniques may, may be used to find an explicit formula for the CDF by integrating the PDF formula. If you can do this and you know how to do this and you can actually have one that works out, then it's better to actually find the formula that way and then work with it. However, this is not necessary and the general approximation technique introduced here and illustrated on the following slides and this section always works for any known PDF and PDF formula and doesn't require any knowledge of calculus. However, it may be kind of slow. So, for example, with enough calculus, we may we know that if the PDF is lambda times e to the minus lambda x, the CDF, and this, this applies from 0 on, so the CDF is then 0 for the integral from 0 to x of lambda e to the minus lambda x dx, it turns out that that is the formula 1 minus e to the minus lambda x. By the way, if you have an Inspire CAS, even if you don't know calculus, you can get it to tell you that formula. Uh, let's, let's look at this. Let me clear this out. Okay, I'll show you. You can just tell it to integrate. If, this is, if you have the CAS version here, we want to integrate from 0 to x. Uh, let me put in, well, I can actually put in a number. Let me just put in L instead of lambda, lambda times e to the power 
uh, negative lambda times x dx. And uh, yeah, that, that should work. Undefined. Okay, let me try that again. It may it may let me change this letter to a different letter here. No, it doesn't like it. Okay, let's see if I can do it with a specific number in there. Point two. Let's see if it'll do it. Can't do it that way. Yeah, if you have that, it comes out at least approximately came out to be some formula. Okay, so in some cases you can get the calculator to tell you stuff like that. Again, it's not important for this class. You don't have to know that. That's just a little sidebar. Okay, so how do we do it with the calculator? Let's get back to our, our main tasks. Okay, so here let's just use a, a, a TI-84. Okay, so here's how we set this up. Put our formula in here. So let's see. Uh, well, there it is. It's the same formula there. 0.1 e to the negative 0.1x, I already have it in. Okay, and y2, I want to do math 9, and I integrate from 0 to x, and actually I don't have to put y1 of x, if I want to, I can just say y1. It'll automatically do the of x for us, like that. y2 is the CDF, y1 is the PDF. So if I go to here and maybe make that bold face, make it a thicker graph like that. See what I did is put my cursor on there and hit enter once. Now I can graph both of these at once. Let's see. I want to go from 0 to, I don't know how far I need to go out. This says 100 works. Uh, I don't need to go that far out. I bet 50 will work. And if it's a CDF, then I can use my standard CDF of negative 0.2 to 1.1 going up by 0.1s for the y's. Now 0 is definite because it starts at 0. Now to do this, let me go back, let me go back to here. Now in this is 0 is what I have right here this time. Let me get back up here. Okay, but if I'll do alpha L then I can set this up and not have to change y2. But to do that, I need to make sure L has the right value. So I'm going to take 0, store it in alpha L. Now, when you run it, you're going to have to store the appropriate number in L every time. Now, with the appropriate number in there, now I can graph it. There's the exponential PDF, and here's going to be the exponential CDF. And if you'll notice, it's kind of slowly graphing here but it comes on up and eventually it's going to go from 0 up to 1 and you can I'll just let this go real time so you can see how slow this thing is okay but while this is graphing here are the answers over here and remember you're going to store something as L every time you run it you can leave it set up here here's what it looks like in the old, newer operating system if you have the older version when you, you're going to basically hit the same buttons you're going to hit math 9 but it'll come up as function integrate put in y1 or x or just y1 if you want, comma x, comma l, comma x. So that first x is the dx, and the last x is the upper limit. The one right before that is l, the lower limit. And of course, the first entry is the function, which is pulling from the function above. So to run it, of course, you need to let y1 be your PDF. Pick an appropriate window, and then look at the graph. It's almost done, almost done. And you'll see here, here's the bigger screen version of the same thing. There's the PDF and the CDF. Now, why do we need such a thing? Well, we need it to be able to do inverse probabilities. Okay, before we go any further, let's look at how we could do this on an Inspire. So on an Inspire, what I did is this. 
Let me just clear this out. Okay. What I did is I took my formula, 0 0.1 uh, e to the power negative 0 0.1x, and I store that, control variable, store it as that's the PDF. So I'm going to store that as PDF of X. Now, I'm going to store zero is I don't like to use a single letter L here, so I'm going to I'm going to call it low. So I'm going to store that as low for my lower limit. Okay, and you can restore it as low. But now if I'd set this up once, I go here, press this, I want to go from low, whatever that is, in this case it's zero, up to X, and I want to integrate the PDF of X, so I need to have the right thing in PDF. The X, and I want to take that whole thing and I want to store that as CDF of X. Now if I'll do this once, now here I don't even have to graph it, I can just, it's, it's just stored. And so these things show up here by hitting variables. You know, here's some of my formulas I made up before and some things I've got stored. And so uh, we have those things, okay? Now, <clears throat> That is the appropriate CDF of X. And in fact, the CDF formula will be right every time as long as I have the right thing stored in low and the right thing stored in PDF of X, then CDF of X will be the CDF of X. So it works out nicely. If I turn around and then go to my graphing menu, uh, i got stuff on here. Let's get rid of it. <clears throat> Control G. And I could go in here and say, let this be whatever CDF of X is. PDF, let's do PDF first. PDF of X, whatever I've got in that formula, let's let it be F1. There's the graph. I'll change the window in a minute. Well, let's change it now. Okay, X needs to go from 0 to, I think 50 worked okay and uh, negative point two to 1.1 if I want to use that again as I usually do. Okay, there's the exponential. An extra point, let's give me that. Okay, and that's the that's the PDF graph. And then if I put in uh, control G, see my list, and put in CDF of X, there's the CDF, and notice it's it's much faster on the on the CAS version of the Inspire than the than the 84 is, and it's prettier looking graphs. So the Inspire definitely is a definitely the way to go if you've got got the money for one of those guys. Okay, and so there it is. There's the screenshots of what I just just did. Now, what if we want to pry? We use this. The, the only reason for doing this is to find, uh, if we just want to see the graph of the CDF and see what it looks like, that's fine. We could do that. But we really only need that if we're trying to do inverse probability problems. But inverse probability problems are hard to do with, with it be have, have some kind of guess and check method if we had to do it with the, with the uh, only with the uh, PDF because we'd have to like, you know, keep guessing numbers and put them in until we got the probability, you know, what we wanted to. That's not a very efficient way to do it. This way we can do it with the CDF. So now that we have the CDF in, we can go back, let's say, to the TI-84 and graph Y equals, actually I don't need this, the PDF graph, so I'm going to turn it off. Don't delete it because then Y2 won't work right. But you see how I turned it on and off? You put your cursor on the equals and hit enter, and now it's on, enter, and now it's off. You can kind of see if it's on or off that way. Now Y3 is going to be our cumulative probability. Like if we want to find the 40th percentile, we put in 0.4. So that means the cumulative probability or probability to the left is 0.4. Now, unfortunately, this is going to have to graph again, which is going to be kind of slow. 
but I want to calculate the intersection there. Now, we got to have to be a little patient while this thing graphs. While that's graphing, I'll go over and do it on the, on the uh, Inspire. Now, you can also do it the same way here, graph a horizontal line and calculate the intersection, but you can also go to here and go to Menu, Algebra, Solve, and we want to solve, go to here, our correct formula is in CDF. We want to form solve CDF of X equal to uh, 0 0.4 and solve that for X and hopefully it will actually do this. It might give us an exact value or an approximate. Okay, it gave us at least an approximate value of that. Okay, and it actually does that pretty quickly. The that ca that calculator is much faster than the what the 84 is having to do. I can okay. Now here we go. The 84 is ready to go. First curve, enter. Be sure you're on the CDF curve first. Then hit enter. Then do the then the horizontal line. Hit enter, and then use your arrow key to go over. It's real slow going left and right on the on the on the CDF curve, and then this is where it really is helpful to get a pretty good guess here. It will speed this up a bit because this may still take a while. Enter, and it's a little longer than you're used to probably waiting here, but it will eventually come up with an intersection point. Of course, y is 0.4, and look at that. There's the x 5.108, something same as we had right here, and that's our 40th percentile. Let's slick how that works. There are the screenshots for the TI-84. There's the newer operating system. There's the older version of what it looks like if you have that version of the calculator. And eventually it graphs this. You calc intersect, you get the point of intersection. There it is. So the 40th percentile is about 5.1. If you wanted to find the median, you know, you just change the 0.4 to 0.5 and so forth. <clears throat> Probably solve from the home screen is probably the easier way to do it on the Inspire, but you can actually do it from the, um, do a calc intersect like you do on the 84 as well. All right, so let's do a, a application problem making use of this and some of the earlier stuff we've done. So the time until failure of a product is modeled by the following probability density function where X is time in years until failure. Actually, I'm going to stop this video. We're going to start this in the next video.